We are live. About 15 minutes up from Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge Session 5. Can you believe it? We made it. Yes. Special treat planned. A little cocktail. Might be a little early. Something to catch on the replay. You know that music is. Yes. Just doing a little mic check here. See if we can work on that echo a little bit. Get started in about 10 minutes or so. So grab your coffee. Get some pastries, of course. We'll see you real soon.
morning, good morning. Let's see how that's sounding. Do you hear this with that echo? We'll say yes. If it's a little echo, we're going to maybe have to work with it a little bit. Super excited for session five. Just about five minutes before nine o'clock, and everything looking good. Everything's great. Feeling great. Let's check on the mic. See if we got to dial back a little bit here. We're going to make it work either way. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Make sure you got your Work for it's printed. Lots of pencils and pens. I'm gonna try to turn it up a little bit. Quiet that music. If you can hear me okay, say yes. If you can hear me all right, say good. I'm gonna tone down that music a little bit so you can turn up your volume. If that sounded good to everybody, say yes. We'll get started in a couple minutes.
It's all good. Yeses. Yes. You know, I like that. Good morning. Lots of virtual high fives. Just a couple more tweaks of the dials. It's lots of fun. It's been interesting learning, juggling this, getting that content right for you guys. I think we're doing a pretty good job. Oh yes, 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 yes. Good morning, everybody. Welcome in session five. We are live. Drinking coffee together. I'm feeling great. This is the fifth and final, fifth and final Chicago Restaurant Pastry Competition. It has been amazing, you guys. I just want to say congrats. We made it. I know we're going to go through some things today, um, but it went fast, right? We had the sessions. We had some coaching in between, some some calls. And what's amazing is you guys did all the work, right? Like, because you guys, um, for me, I was just sharing some things that I knew. I, as you know, am full-time consulting and working with businesses, and that's great. But the goal here was to work with the chefs and talk to you guys and kind of give back and offer some solutions. I see a lot of positivity uh, when I go out, but I also, you know, through social media and, and talking to friends across the country, know that everybody isn't in that same boat and everybody can't feel as great about their future. But the truth is the future is not certain. And the things that we've done, these exercises have made maybe those limiting beliefs and those fears um, subside a little bit so we can actually work and operate. Let's look at today, session five's outline. Infinite growth. So we don't want to stop with five hours of lives and some replays and two to three hours worth of coaching. That's not enough, right? We want to keep going. And I want to say, you guys, we're built to keep going. So infinite growth, how to build your career so that you never stop expanding. All about the expansion here. And then, of course, our trajectory maps. Uh, I've probably had a few versions. I know I've rewritten mine a couple times, considered some other things. And, you know, you can make as many as you want, compare what we did and uh, one, two, and today. What does it look like today? Do we need to do some fine tuning? And then creating value, process from creating value. Some things we've talked about before, maybe some new ideas creep in a little bit. And then health, wellness, energy. We really can't do all these amazing things that we've set goals, visualized, got excited about if we don't have the energy to fulfill that and to, to kind of take that into the future and continue it. I mean, if we get there, we want to enjoy it, right? So a little bit on health and wellness, that could be a huge four day seminar on its own, but a little bit's important. And of course, a closing cocktail party, uh, something special from at pastry wife. Some of you may know who she is. We'll talk more about that later and have a little party that we can play on replay and enjoy again and again um, if you choose but first a little review all right so here's our outline for everything we did we started way back there uh, five weeks ago and in session one if you remember we introduced the idea initially of the golden circle and our whys and you know kind of how that correlates to how our brains work so hopefully now you have a really succinct why Remember, we want to make it broad enough to allow us to go into the future, but narrow enough where we can niche down and be specific so we can specifically have a goal, specifically have a, a customer, a client, um, something that's achievable because it's well-defined, not just in general. Hey, I'd like to have uh, be making pastries. Well, you have a job, you're making pastries, but it's not the job you wanted. 
doing it the way you wanted and you know affecting the world the way you want it to so we realized that that why is so important and the first two sessions that was a lot of hard work guys that was thinking about things that we kind of know it's always great to put it on paper and it's really hard right some things you kind of know it you go to write it you know, maybe, you know maybe there's parts of it that have worked out better than others so it makes sense that the first session or two was a lot of work so great i mean once you got the why together we could figure out that the hows and the what's we'll work on as we go along you guys most everyone in this group right now have a ton of experience so that experience you guys are so humble i can tell from talking to all of you because you want to continue to learn and you don't feel like you know it all because we don't and no one wants to be the smartest person in the room and no one likes someone that's always like, yeah, yeah, I already know that. And with, you know, I would say the internet access to information, we have more and more people around us that feel like they know it. And if they don't know something, they're going to look it up. So they feel like they could know it in five minutes. And sometimes that's true, right? It's really true. But it's different the depth of knowledge that each of you have from being mentored by other chefs, from being in the trenches every day in different food businesses, from always learning. And, you know, we learned here that learning is expansion and we are built to expand. So with that, why super important, right? If we feel a little uncertainty there, we should go back and tweak and fine tune it. I think that's the most important thing for these sessions is that if we started with our why, once we got that solid, and we were able to kind of move on because we also talked about the elements of our identity and our style. So with the why, we have identity that some of it we decided a long time ago kind of has to go. It's not our identity anymore. And some of it we were really cool with and we we're glad we felt that way and uh, want to bring that into the future. It's still really relevant. So we can kind of change that identity. Sometimes those identities we learned keep us from new opportunities. Sometimes those identities are limiting in different ways, uh, especially if we think we have to be a certain kind of pastry chef, work in a certain kind of environment. We thought about everything from getting closer to farming, from food science to recipe testing, to working in grocery and arenas that we thought, believe me, for me too, I, I really don't belong in grocery. The best thing I ever did was work in retail grocery to connect what we know about high-end pastry what we know about the manufacturers that we love, like the chocolate companies, gelato ingredient companies, the list goes on and on. Getting closer to those companies creates opportunities for us, creates jobs, work, money, relationships, um, and above all, uh, relationships. So we learned and thought about pivoting based on those things and thinking about stories and how to share those stories. So we moved into session two, we continued to kind of redefine that identity and think about, uh, and I can tell you for me, just personally, I had a really strong identity that I uh, built to succeed in the fine dining world. You know, I worked for some of the best brands at the time, had a lot of uh, multinational reach, and there were groups of chefs that were in all these units and all these hotels that were really taking care of the richest people in the world and the movie stars and all the people who uh, traveled all the time for business and really it was expensive, it was a, a high-end experience and it was a new business model. Thinking about, you know, at that time, way back whenever that was, at that time, the idea that a management company would come into an existing hotel and run it their way was unthought of, unheard of. But they came in with their standards, their ideas, their uh, beliefs for expansion and change the world of hospitality completely. And so I had the benefits to be there and learn from all these individuals on the same path. And yeah, a lot of it, we were figuring it out uh, as we went along, what worked, what, what uh, guests liked, how to turn them into to clients who would travel around and always stay at our hotels and always have that best experience. But I found over time became really limiting for me because I had to always be um, at the best level, could never do anything that was relaxed dining or pedestrian or, or viewed pedestrian or somewhat um, anything other than cutting edge top of the mark. And that's great. It's a 
nice place to live. It's fun. And I like living there. And I can identify with that. I love being innovative. Uh, we talked about the diffusion of innovation and how innovation is exciting, but it isn't really where the population lives. Definitely not where a majority of commerce uh, sales and activity uh, happen. So for me, I was operating in a space that was really limited and didn't know it. And I was able to uh, maneuver in that space and become uh, well known at doing things that were innovative and uh, in particular play to dessert. But my day to day, and you've heard me say this a lot, my day to day was really, you know, making muffins, doing 60, 70 wedding cakes a year. Doing all the pastry stuff that people eat every day, cookies, you know, things that uh, probably are better businesses than the business of being cutting edge for fine dining. And as years went on, uh, that continued to be the case. And we would sit back and we saw it from a lot of different angles that really that high end experience, people weren't going to sit down for three and a half to five hours to have dinner anymore, unfortunately, right? We don't have that time and don't want to do that. We have other things we want to do. And people, the money, you know, it's expensive. How many of those meals can most people have in a month, a year, two years, five years? So you would go and have this one stellar experience. You never come back. So we know how to turn customers into clients is to have them come back and, you know, keep that relationship going and continue to use services and find better and different ways to serve them. So again, not in the right business, not for, not for long-term and sustainability and, Initially, sustainability wasn't even a, a, a word, a thought that could be related to so many things, but now it's everything. And especially with the way this year has been, there's sustainable models that did really well. Maybe they accidentally happened upon it. Cool. But all these old models really took a hit because they were based on things uh, that weren't sustainable. We knew was coming. We didn't know when. Well, then it happened, right? And it happened. And so with that redefinition, we talked about brand. And so that's when I started to realize for myself that I am my brand. So we talked about that on our calls with everyone. You are your brand. And sometimes when we work for others or we um, have a project that we develop, we kind of mistake the two. But from a branding standpoint, from a, a personality standpoint, from an identity standpoint, if you are an entrepreneur, have your own pastry business, or if you're a journeyman that's working in other people's businesses, but you're bringing your identity to it, when I think about it, you bring your recipes, original designs, the systems that support it, uh, that's a lot of IP. And in the pastry field, we don't really view that, or we might view it as IP. We can view it however we want to, but the industry itself doesn't say, hey, I would there's value to that IP, those systems that support it. We just know some pastry chefs are more successful than others at various things. So here we're looking at those things that make you successful. And yeah, it's a lot of cooking and it's a lot of everything else too. So the more we identify with us being our brand, uh, the more authentic we feel uh, that feels to others. And that authenticity to me is the premium these days. Authenticity and knowledge-based education that you got from actually doing something. Those two things uh, are very marketable skills and you can take those uh, and, and thrive with those. So then we talk about a little bit of visualization and our image. And a visualization we'll get to in a little bit in health and wellness, but I hope we've started to do that and kind of visualizing outside of where we are. We said that every chef is a universe. We got into platform creation. so. Here you are as chef, you've got all this stuff going on and it doesn't, doesn't really have to make sense in everybody's world, right? I think it's really important to realize that the best version of success is your version of success, right? I'll say it again, because sometimes we see the path a certain way. I mean, think about it for the larger population. How many of Gen Z and on you, do you think we'll say, I really should go to college. I need to buy a house someday. You need to have those things that were very valuable at one time. I don't think that's the case, right? It's already not becoming the case. It'll be even more so. So having that idea um, that this is what makes success, we really want to, now that we have a, a clear why, evaluate what success means for us living in our why, right? 
that's what it means to me when people say living in their truth. But if you don't have a clearly defined why mission, if you're not identifying yourself as being a key component of that business. If the business is existing over here somewhere and I'm over here, there's still that separation and either you'll hire someone to infuse that, but now there's other things at play or you'll just be able to cut through it, clear that path. We talked a bit about boundaries and smashing through those and really boundaries. The thing I want you guys to take away is that they're just something to be aware of and something to prove wrong every time. Those boundaries of limits, those glass ceilings, those things just mean that it hasn't been done before and everything at some point hadn't been accomplished by somebody. And then we'll look at the precedent again and again and again, people who were counted out succeed and we love those stories because it proves a point but we really need to take those stories to heart and say that's me that's me there's no reason i mean think about again bringing back to me personally because i think there's value here to share that i came from a small part of detroit on the west side that um, not many successful people came from because it was a neighborhood that was set up for tool and die in support of the auto industry and we know what happened with the auto industry. So we've got a working class community and many of the sons and daughters of uh, the people in our neighborhood just went into tool and die. They didn't go to college and they knew they had that great path for them that was secure because those businesses were thriving. And you know, a lot of cars were being sold and they need a lot of uh, parts. And you could always go work for the car company too. So it was a big industry, but it was the only industry in our city uh, aside from some music and that had kind of faded as we really um, had moved to other cities that were better positioned. Um, long story short, we know Detroit's not a place where you could be a high-end pastry chef and you couldn't travel and support yourself and be excited and learn and grow uh, doing pastry in Detroit, Michigan. Very difficult. Might be more possible now. Things have changed a bit, but that wasn't the spot. And Moreover, when I looked around, there wasn't people being successful at anything. So, you know, I got into the music business and there were some people that were successful in music. But we noticed, wait a minute, people from other cities were always the ones being more successful. So a, a little bit that that environment you could let define you. So um, obviously that's not the case. You know, I've been able to do a lot of things and some of you can probably relate to that. But if you ever get stuck, uh, remember that it's a little bit up to you to remember that those boundaries don't really matter. And maybe just changing some of the patterns that you have, reevaluating some of the things we've talked about here, and that will get you back on your path. I'm positive it will, guys. You guys have done such great work with all this stuff. You're really going to get there. And then we got into a little bit campaigns and the importance of that. I was able to launch my campaign, our fall classes, so Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge 2 and the How to Be Your Own Publicist. So a little bit more on that later. I have a special surprise for you guys. And then uh, watched you guys launch so many things. And it's been exciting seeing so many things come up, uh, everyone cleaning up their social, changing their platforms, kind of redirecting it toward what those whys are. So we went over the campaigns and services and yeah, money and transaction and how platform model really helps keep that moving so that we're working on um, just that authenticity, the brand, you know, broadcasting things. And that thing that we're selling is sort of the byproduct of it. And so we had those launches and that brings us up to where we are today, which is congratulations, right? Let's do a little bit. All right. Applause. Pat yourselves on the back. I mean, really reach back there. Pat yourselves on the back. We made it through five weeks of intensive growth and expansion. We, you know, self-examination, pivots, growth, coaching calls. Yeah, reach back there. Congratulate yourself for doing what 99% of others aren't doing. 99% of others aren't doing. So like most things in life, you get out of it uh, what you put into it, for sure, for sure, for sure. So infinite growth, 
is what we're after. And we really talking about how to build so that you never stop expanding. And that is keep your notes. Previews will be up for a while. Replays will be up for a while. Just keep going over things. I know every time for me that I go back over something, I learn it better. Um, but I do want to say it's been, for me, uh, very rewarding uh, to watch all this happen. It's been personally rewarding for me to see all those goals come into effect. So I just wanted to reiterate one more time how impressed I am at the success you've had. Uh, and if you got something out of this, Please share, let people know there's some good stuff going on here that we can uh, share, give away. And for you guys too, if you have a link, you think someone might be interested, you know, send them a link to session one, see if that's something that's for them. And, you know, if we get stuck, like we're saying in our, in our path, you know, think about that infinity. So to come back, might get stuck a little bit and don't even be distracted by it. Being stuck is another you know, limiting belief that you're going to hit those walls and say, it's not going to work. Often, often the day after the worst day is the best day for a project breakthrough. Often. I don't know how many times this happened. And hopefully we can learn to recognize when we have those really negative experience, bad days, stuff's not working. This is not going to work. Starts creeping in your brain. You just have to say, stop. You don't even hear that stuff because that's just a distraction. That's one day, one moment, one, you know, bad thing that happened, one client, one bad experience, and that's it. Uh, it's how we recover from those things uh, we know kind of makes a difference. So one final trajectory map, I'm sure you guys love these by now. And, you know, kept this one blank, we can fill it in, keep it clean, add to it all those nice uh, circles and things and stops along the way and, you know, elaborate on them too, on a separate piece of paper, the, what you do and how you do those redefined bind boundaries, all that redefinition of yourself, uh, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. It's not something that happens overnight, but key decisions, uh, they do happen overnight. Key decisions happen in a blink of an eye and all of a sudden, there's something else that's happened. I mean, let's think about it. Is there one or two things that happened on your career path that were really literally one thing? One thing happened and everything changed for your career. I've had a couple of those things where I didn't necessarily see it that way at the time, but when they happen, it changed my life forever, right? Meeting the right person changes everything. And again, we don't know. So by building those relationships, by staying active, you know, we talked about that a bit and um, social kind of coming to the party slowly, using LinkedIn, using all of the uh, different channels that we have to kind of reach out and get to know people and, you know, create that value as a result. As far as value goes, you know, I love a good word cloud. Some things that create value, right? That turn customers into clients quality right we're big on quality satisfaction great products look at some of these are great effectiveness service smile that should be bigger quality service guaranteed advice response time we get there quick solutions our company you know we're loyal to you that creates loyalty from others good publicity Hey, money back guarantee, you know, maybe we're, we're in a position to say, you know what, we guarantee everything that we do, we, we guarantee it. If you don't have satisfaction, we give you money back. And we all like that. And I think that's okay to give that offer. If you, if you are afraid of that, I would say the amount of people, if you have a quality service, you guys are quality people. You're going to do your best for someone. Very few people will say, oh, yeah, I'm going to take you up on that. It wasn't what I thought. They're not going to rip you off. If you do a bad job, you'll probably want to give their money back, right? Because that's the kind of uh, business that we want to build. A little coffee break, and we're going to dive into the second half. All right. So in creating value, a couple important things. So your best stuff. 
I want you guys to always give everybody your best stuff all the time. I want to give you my best stuff every time. You probably notice in some of our calls, we weren't always talking about the things uh, that were the homework. Yeah, we covered all this stuff that was important, but there may be some things outside of the scope of this that uh, you had questions about, uh, were seeking help with, wanted more information, a different perspective. And those are things that to me in my business are saleable goods. You know, I'd uh, really like to say that uh, you want to give all those things away no matter what. And so you might think, wait a minute, I'm not giving away my business. You know, like why would someone hire a consultant if I already consulted for them? But and you'll see a lot of a lot of uh, consultants, professionals, chefs, uh, business people at all levels, business owners are really reluctant, right? We'll give you this much, which is good. And that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, here's a taste. You want more, you know, purchase the product, purchase the service. But I want to tell you that's a little bit wrong. Or maybe it's all wrong. Let me tell you what really works is being authentic and giving your best stuff at every opportunity. I mean, we don't really know if we have proximity to a owner of a business that we want to do business with or a potential customer or client. We don't know that if we have a conversation that we're really giving and solve one problem, aren't they going to come back to solve problems two, three, and four? How many of us in business just have one thing to solve and we're good? Nobody, right? No, nobody. So yeah, it might feel a little weird at first, but it actually feels really good to, you know, not be so um, conservative with that, not, not try to hide those secrets. Uh, we talked about some chefs who, you know, I had a chef that I worked with in Austin. We would make the same recipes and this is way back. I was I was just a cook at the time, and basically all his recipes came out better, a little bit better than everyone else's. And when we started to compare notes, we realized he was working off different recipes and just changing them a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, um, and not giving the full uh, recipe so that he would just retain his position, that he would be a little bit uh, look better than us. That's pretty small minded, right? I mean. Basically, it's also his success. And now all he would have to say is, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess I'll have to make it this time. I mean, it's really not a smart strategy, but I think we can all relate to some chefs where that would be uh, the case that some people um, aren't that giving. So I want you to give your best stuff and always give your best stuff. And whether or not there's uh, unimplied commerce tied to that, give your best stuff and relationships the second thing on our list here that allows you to work on those relationships first i mean that's the most important thing work on the relationship sales and work money will come i mean think about it work and money it ebbs and it flows it ebbs and it flows uh in the businesses we work for in our own business there's never a time where you just smash it forever every budget that we make for the following year eventually you feel like you become a victim of success, right? Because what do we do? We have a great year. We make a budget. We raise the bar. Another great year. Let's raise the bar. Well, we know in every industry at some point, we're going to raise the bar. We're going to have a bad year. And then, boom, we failed to meet our expectations. Well, those expectations are things that we manufactured, right? But relationships will get us through all of that. Internal relationships, the relationship with our clients, will help us survive those. And what do we do when we get through those crashes? Start again, right? Start again, reevaluate. And that whole time, just keep giving our best stuff. We run into problems when we start to um, change like that without being able to deliver the same. So we kind of create an environment of distrust uh, within our own ranks as well and then with our clients. And that's a place that's very hard to come back from. And so... You know, that brings us to service. You know, we're at our best when we're serving others. We're at our best when we're giving away those things we learn, right? We are making room. This is how I like to think about it. We're making room in ourselves for more for us by giving it away, you know, whether it's a pastry recipe, 
an idea for a business, some insight. I mean, if I can't do something for you, but I know where you can find someone that can help you, I'll refer you to that person. We should all do that and create that positivity and solve that problem. At the end of the day, that's service. So, you know, following those ninja promotion uh, philosophies we talked about, that when we're serving others, we're not just selling the desserts and selling our service and making the wedding cakes and doing those things, uh, the chocolate uh, business itself. It's the experience and understanding the story of how that chocolate bar got to them. Understanding the value of the process over the product, the value of the relationship, you know, over just the item that we made. So I hope that makes some sense. There's a lot of ways to create value there. And I'm going to move on to the important area we talk about, kind of a departure in a way. And again, this could be a huge subject. I'm not an expert on this, but I can share with you that wellness has brought the best to me to be able to every day get up and just be excited to crush it. Every day I get up, and I want to grind and crush and do all those cool things, just like I did when I was in my 20s, maybe even more so. So look at this wellness wheel. There's something you can fill out in your own time, one to 10. Lots of different aspects of it. And we've talked about some of those. Didn't get too much into finance, although, you know, finance too, I would say is another, uh, it's another class, right? But it's really another area that needs to be in balance for everything to work. And that's not just your, your business finance, uh, your personal finance, and just your understanding of how that um, comes into play with everything that you're planning on doing. So we'll talk about the physical stuff here in a moment, but the financial, where am I at? One to 10 with that. Recreational, you know, I used to say, and I think this might be true for a lot of chefs, I didn't really have any hobbies, you know, like all my hobbies were learning about chocolate or about other pastry things I didn't know, but I wanted to know. So my hobby would be like reading books about confectionery. My hobby would be like taking my vacation time and traveling somewhere to learn from someone great. There's value to that, but we all need a, a hobby, you know, and actually something that has no reward except for just the pleasure of doing it. There's something you like to do play chess, you know, watch sports, go for walks. Like, you know, if there's something you enjoy doing, making bracelets, really simple things, and you just do it just to do it for yourself. Those are the things that are really rewarding, I found. Um, and then social stuff, feeling connected. We talked about relationships. It is unfortunate that we can't meet in the ways that we used to 100% of the time. But I don't think just giving up is the uh, the right response. There's a lot of ways to feel connected and more and more uh, I'm finding ways to connect um, at a distance and it's been good. Like everyone's in the same boat. And when you reach out and you think about someone, send them a note, feels really good. And I'm sure they're happy to hear from you. And then mental, this mindset. Uh, we've talked about that a lot. Spiritual, there's some, you know, to me, whatever, people's belief system or ideas on spirituality, if it's a religion, if it's how you feel, if it's a um, whatever the source uh, is, is not as relevant as acknowledging its importance in our lives. And we'll talk about that shortly. And then just the environment, you know, where you're living, if you feel comfortable and safe, you know, one to 10, where is that on there? And it creates this spider here. And then of course the occupational. But if you look on this wheel, they're actually all equal. They're actually equal. And that's sort of what can create, you know, like a balance for us. But how often is it not equal in our lives, you know? So I'm going to share with you and a dial and, you know, again, in your own time, fill this out. We'd love it if you share with me and uh, see, you know, maybe you'll have some surprising outcomes from that. But from the, the physical and kind of the wellness, some simple things that I want to share with you guys, what, what works for me is a routine. Okay. So a successful morning routine to me contributes to the wellness that gives me the energy to do what we're doing every day. And people who know me can tell you I'm seven days a week as much as I can. Yeah. I take breaks now and balance it out, 
but I get up every day excited. If your why is something that you have, uh, you know, kind of penetrates your heart that, that makes you happy, you'll get up every day to do that. And that's what you need to find. It's really important. You can work hard and work hard and eventually take it from me. It, it'll wear out a little bit at some point. You'll push, you'll get a lot of goals even. You'll, um, and no matter what goal you have, you know, again, I have these Emmys back here. We have some other awards too, but I just wanted to make a statement. One, everyone recognizes that, that Emmy. Everyone recognizes one of these as being, you know, something cool, something, it's acknowledgement of work that you did, you know, something that you worked on really hard in private that you shared with the public and now uh, you got a reward for it. But I can tell you no matter what award, think about the things you've got in the past, no matter what we've had, it doesn't last. That good feeling lasts definitely when you get it, maybe a little after. Um, I had a lot of second place, you know, awards and competitions and I felt terrible after because I wanted to be number one. And then when I got number one, uh, that didn't feel as amazing for long enough to make it the reason to keep going. So again, you know, work on the why that you get up for every day and then work on a routine uh, like this that supports that. So some things I do early in the morning, first thing, and I love coffee, everyone probably knows. And from judging from the Patriot Chef Expansion group, everybody, you know, what's your favorite breakfast? Coffee, 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 and coffee. Uh, I think someone liked tea. So, but before we get started with the coffee, lemon water, it's a really important warm water with lemon uh, and all these things, guys, you can look up and, and see much more about it, but that is a really good tonic for your system. You know, you've got vitamin C in there with the lemon. There's other things you can add to it, you know, apple cider vinegar. Some people put in uh, cayenne, pepper, um, and really get your body uh, gently moving toward the day. I mean, it's been kind of tied to all sorts of things like weight loss and, you know, other um, other ways of digestion and that. So look it up. Let's start out with some lemon water. If you can, celery juice is good. Fresh celery juice, much better. Lots of great properties for celery juice. Um, if you need to and you're traveling, you want to do the celery juice, they do have it, you know, in a little, in a little uh, container in the grab and go. But doesn't taste quite as good does have some benefits and both those things are super hydrating, right? You want to get up in the morning and, uh, and hydrate. We know that's important. And then of course, smoothies, it's not necessarily first thing in the morning. This can be a great all day option when you're working. Um, I know when I am working a lot in the kitchen, I'm tasting stuff, I'm tasting a lot of sweet stuff, but you know, I'm not really eating anything. And sometimes when I eat, it's not good. I just crash and I don't want to crash. I want to keep going. So smoothies, a good option for that. You'd have to chew and eat maybe a huge salad to get as much as you can put in a green smoothie as far as benefits and um, nutrition or a fruit smoothie. Think of all those antioxidants that are packed into the things that are typically in fruit smoothies like the berries or acai powder or other things you can add. So we all know these are uh, important in our culture now. A lot of people are doing them, but that doesn't mean we're doing them, right? So I would suggest let's do them. Lemon water is the simplest. Uh, to get going with. And then meditation. We talked about visualization, but I start with meditation first. And you want to clear your mind, you can find uh, online through YouTube, many different types of meditation. And again, the purpose is just to start out before the day, you know, before things start to happen, where we could check our emails, where we are um, already involved with things that are going on, answering the phones, all these things that we clear our mind and set our goals for the day. For better outcomes so we're clearing our mind through the meditation that could be five minutes that could be 50 minutes whatever feels good i'll tell you the more you do the more you'll want to do it's a great space to be in and then that can directly feed into your visualization we did the five minute visualization thinking of those projects and just remember in your visualizations picture things that are the way they will feel when they're done picture things visualize you doing them and it already being done. You going through any big moment. This morning I had the visualization session five, right? It's already done, it was awesome. It was great, we crushed it. We all celebrated together and I had that feeling coming into today and get that energy. So that visualization step is great. And then some exercise. And guys, that can be stretching, right? That can be 
some light yoga, but it's really important to get your body moving. You have so much different energy and propensity for success, for learning, for uh, crushing your day by just exercising, you know, but you want to get that heart rate up. You don't want to just do walks. Walks are great, but it's different if you're uh, do some stretching, do some yoga, and then try to bring your heart rate up. I mean, you can do the stuff that we do as kids, right? Jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, anything, you know, do 10 of this, 10 of that. Find something online that works for you. Uh, often going to the gym is great, all these things, you know, that's been limited for people. But really a simple thing is good. And doing it every day a little bit, it's going to pay dividends. And then the last thing I would suggest in this routine, sort of this five-step routine, is uh, journaling and daily planning. So journaling to me is separate. I would, you know, you could just do this separately or in a book that you keep like a journal, but more exactly it's writing, just writing that, that, uh, and I found for a long time I stopped writing because what we have word processors and phones and emails. And I'm just typing everything out, but it's a different process when we're actually writing those things out. So often when I'm writing in the morning, um, after the meditation, the visualization, maybe before the exercise, the orders is, is up to you guys, but I'll write out the same thing over and over, you know, almost like a visualization, one of those things, but just write it over and over what I, how I feel about things that happen, what some goals are, just how you feel, just get it out on paper. And uh, sometimes I fold up, keep it in my pocket uh, for the week, kind of look back on it sometimes, kind of keep them all together. But it's an, something to think about, something to try. And then, of course, the daily plan, like, what am I going to do today? I have, you know, plan and set up in my reminders uh, for my calendar for next month, next week, you know, Q1, 2, 3, 4, next year. That's all separate. But just today, and kind of tweak and change it. But already, and this process could take an hour. You could crunch it all down to 15 minutes. You could do the most important things. I would say the lemon water and some, you know, meditation visualization before you leave the house and really get focused on things. So this is my easy take on, on getting started with wellness and giving you that energy so that when you arrive at those goals, when you arrive on the steps along the way every day, you're going to bring that energy and just feel excited to do it, guys. Just feel excited to be a chef. I mean, again, let me remind you one more time. All the things we're living today at one point were goals for us that we didn't know we would achieve we wanted to have and now we have them and you know it's time to make those new goals and time to uh, reassess our whys like we did all right so i want to kind of introduce you this little cocktail it's a special treat from at pastry wife you guys that's my wife julie mcmillan a huge part of my success is having a partner who is chef in her own right that's helpful and also uh, someone who can support all the things that we do uh, for each other in the food business uh, and in life, right? Super thankful, super blessed, super lucky. There will be people in your life right now, maybe, you know, uh, could be a family member, a niece, you know, a nephew, a friend, close friend. Uh, really remind, just want to remind you guys to, to tell them how much you appreciate them and just show gratitude or in your visualizations, picture all these people. You don't ever have to tell them, but picture that gratitude. It goes a long way, but I'm certainly grateful. And I'm grateful for this autumn cider cocktail that she shared with us. She's right now, Julie's doing a lot of cocktails with uh, interesting ingredients and essential oils really play into that. Uh, essential oils for us have been a great addition to our uh, wellness routine. And then, you know, when I was going into a boardroom or have like a really big event right now I need to go to or go sit down with a, a potential client or an existing client, especially difficult ones. Yes, they do exist. Um, there are certain oils I would put on and it just helps, you know, kind of connect uh, to that person within me that um, I'm bringing that energy to the table. I'm not going to adapt to whatever other energy might be in the room. I'm going to bring the energy. I have my mission. I visualize the outcome. And there we go. And uh, I don't want to say it starts with drinking great cocktails, but it certainly doesn't hurt. All right, so I'm going to pull the setup up here. I'm going to make this drink. It might be a little early for you guys. I mean, it is the weekend, so kind of in the brunch hours. 
All right. You can kind of follow along here. Give me a moment to pull out. I got some ice in here for us. All right, I'm gonna call this our cocktail party, right? We're wrapping up here. Got a shaker, nice glass. Apple cider. Some ice, some ice. You know, we could really use some music, right? Let's get some music. Got some special music for today, for our end here. There you go. Feel like we're at the party now? All right. Some bourbon, anything will do. Lemon essential oil. And a couple garnishes, a cinnamon stick. A sea of cinnamon. Some apple slices. Ginger ale, something nice. All right, so in the shaker. Put some ice. You probably caught the little the lemon essential oil. This is essential oil made for consumption. Drop oh, a little extra. It just makes it yummier. And our apple cider. taste it. I can almost taste this. I'm so ready to celebrate. Always every victory we're going to celebrate. Shake it. A glass. Oh yeah, hear that? A little bit. Perfect. cinnamon stick, the apple, let's go. This is for you guys, 100%. Love the work you've done, thank you. A toast, oh, this is delicious. So if you're drinking with me now, say yes. If you're gonna have one of these later, say yes. And let's celebrate, guys. We did it, it's perfect. All that hard work. I can't wait to see what you guys do. Keep in touch with everything. Let me know. Let me know what you need. If you have questions, don't feel uh, reluctant to reach out. Just reach out, whatever you have. Wanted to let you know as well that for those of you who have went through this experience with me, beta 10, beta 10 is the code. 10% off the uh, future classes. So anybody wants to take how to be how to be your own publicist, that's going to be a great one. Beta 10. If you want to share the Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge, we've got another round coming up. Share that with a friend, Beta 10. So you guys are the beta group. I applaud you. Thank you so much. This has been great. Hopefully it's rewarding for you as for me. I appreciate you guys. Thanks and be good. Be well and do everything with energy. Peace.
Special message to everyone out there regarding the Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge. Hi everybody, I'm Jimmy McMillan. Just wanted to share the celebration. We just wrapped up session five of the beta version of the Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge. I got my little drink here from our party. And just a little PSA here about what we have coming up. We've got one more round of Pastry Chef Expansion Challenge. We're calling that two. And we cover everything in five weeks, five one hour sessions, plus 30 minute coaching in between. Everything from your why, crushing through limiting beliefs, expanding, how to get more knowledge, how to build a brand, platform based businesses, and a whole lot more. And also a new class, how to be your own publicist using the 15 to 20 years of knowledge that I have of being my own publicist, writing for magazines, and ghost writing my own article for some of the top pastry magazines and other magazines in the country, and a little bit international too, if that's interesting to you. You can visit www.pastryvirtuosity.com for more information. Send me a message. Let me know if you use the code BETA10. I'll share that with you. You'll get an additional 15% off the of class. Enrolling now. You guys be well. I'll drink to that. Peace. to share the celebration we just wrapped up session five of the beta version of the pastry chef expansion challenge i got my little drink here from our party and just a little psa here about what we have coming up we've got one more round of pastry chef expansion challenge we're calling that two and we cover everything in five weeks five one hour sessions plus 30 minute coaching in between everything from your why Crushing through limiting beliefs, expanding, how to get more knowledge, how to build a brand, platform-based businesses, and a whole lot more. And also a new class, how to be your own publicist, using the 15 to 20 years of knowledge that I have of being my own publicist, writing for magazines, and ghost writing my own article for some of the top pastry magazines and other magazines in the country, and a little bit international too, if that's interesting to you. You can visit www.pastryvirtuosity.com for more information. Send me a message. 
Let me know if you use the code BETA10. I'll share that with you. You'll get an additional 15% off the class. Enrolling now. You guys be well. I'll drink to that. Peace. to hop on here and let's share the celebration we just finished session five of the pastry chef expansion challenge got my little drink here so we have another one coming up i wanted to tell you what a great time it was five sessions five hours plus coaching covering everything that there is from what your personal why is to how to build your brand and promote it. How to use all your different channels, build your network. We got a little video editing thrown in and uh, a little bit of health and wellness so that you arrive with that energy as well. So we got to work and I can share what took me maybe 10, 15, 20 years, all the tips and tricks and secrets to getting that promotion in any market that you're in, I can tell you. It doesn't matter where you are, now more than ever, you can use a little bit of that know-how and really make a name for yourself and broadcast all that cool stuff that you're doing. www.pastryvirtuosity.com. Check it out. Send me a message. Be well, guys. Have a great weekend. celebration we just wrapped the expansion challenge coming up we've got one more round how to be your own publicist using the 15 to 20 years of international too if that's interesting to you you can visit www.pastryvirtuosity.com for more information send me a message let me know if you use the code beta 10 i'll share that with you you'll get an additional 15 percent off the class Enrolling now, you guys be well. I'll drink to that. Peace.